Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you all some variations of how um, the groovy cabs that we sell on our website backtoearthcreations.com can be wire backed. So there's endless variations to how you can do this um, and I'm really excited to see what y'all do with it but we're going to start you all with what I think is probably the easiest um, kind of starter project and that is this one here so in my opinion the easiest wire wrapped rings to make are ones that use like just a drilled round or oval bead but with these ones here with the groovy cabs you're able to set a cabochon um without fear of losing it and getting just a very different look and feel and a much more slim and streamlined style of ring depending I don't know they can get pretty beefy <laughs> but um every time I do something with like let's say like a 10 millimeter bead it, it's pretty thick and I really like how cabochons are kind of don't like that so the tools and materials that we'll be using today are listed down in the video description as well as linked in our curated toolkit on our website. Um, and I recommend using probably a 20 gauge, though I have used 18 gauge for this as well. A lot of that depends on the type of stone that you're wrapping. This one here I wrapped with an 18 gauge and I did get a little bit of flaking off of the stone just because it filled the groove up pretty substantially but it gets a really nice look but today and especially if this is your first time wire wrapping I really recommend a 20 gauge it's soft enough that it's not going to be too hard on your fingers you don't have to put a whole lot of force on it to get it to twist and stuff so let's start out with the 20 gauge now this is a copper core wire from parawire.com that has been silver plated and then enameled to look like this really nice like kind of titanium toned um I always think of it as like an antique silver and it matches oxidized silver, titanium, and stainless steel jewelry really well. Also, mandrel pliers or a mandrel or a knitting needle or a pen or something, round nose pliers, bent nose pliers, and wire snips. Optional but useful are a hammer and a steel block for hammering on. And that just gave us, whenever we did the twisted ring band, we were able to hammer it. And it gives a, a pretty cool effect. So also, <laughs> and probably most useful, is a groovy cab. Which, we sell these on our website. All of the cabochons that are suitable on our website have an option where you can select and we will add a groove for you. If the cab isn't thick enough, or it's too brittle of a stone or something like that, um, we just don't have the option listed on there. Uh, just because like some stones like um, turquoise is quite soft and the it, it tends to like flake and break and be brittle whenever we're uh, adding the groove. So I don't have video of me adding the groove, but the tools for adding the grooves are down in the video description. But you can see we just add this like channel around the entire perimeter of the stone and it gives you a whole bunch of different options like we you could technically use any stone to make a ring or any stone to make a, like a pendant or something too but this kind of demonstrates here how some of our groovy wrapped or uh, wire wrapped groovy cabs look as pendants so similar concept it just gives a channel for the wire to very comfortably and securely nestle into and i'm going to be pulling off about 12 to 15 inches pair of wire is affordable enough that you don't have to be stingy with it and i always prefer to give myself a little bit extra than risk not having enough oh also a ring mandrel uh this is very very helpful in knowing what size you're making your ring and it gives you something to shape around and all sorts of stuff like that so uh i think today i'm going to wrap this red jasper and I'm going to begin by using my mandrel pliers on the smallest setting. I'm just going to come in here. And I'm going to do it a little bit different than how I did on this one because I kind of want that loop on both sides. So experiment away. Variety keeps life spicy. Or was it experimentation is the spice of life? Yeah. <laughs> so we've just made that little loop. And we could... 
hold that with our, on this one, I just did the one loop, but that was like the one twist, but this was with 18 gauge. So with the 20 gauge, we're going to want it a little bit more stable and secure. So I'm going to do, let's do two twists. I like that. And now we'll come in and place our stone. I want to bring these out kind of T-posed, like coming out straight from each side so that we can nestle this then into the groove and start bringing this around. And you can make a choice here if you want the same wire on top on the other side so that it's mirror imaged or if you want it to be kind of just continued in that twisting pattern, which I think that's what I'm going to go for. So I'm just nestling that wire into the groove and giving it a nice little bend. Now it's going to be a little loose right this second because we haven't done the final um, twisting, but I'm just going to hold the wire in with my fingers. You could tape it if you wanted, but I find my fingers work perfectly fine for this. And I'm going to do one twist in making sure that the wire is kind of in line with itself. And now from here, I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to grip and holding the plier hand stable, I'm going to continue this sort of twist tie twist to cinch this wire down on our stone. And there's still a little bit of wiggle in there, so I'm going to just grasp it again and cinch a little bit more. And I want to be making sure that the wire is actually nestled into that groove. You don't want to twist too much because if your wire is quite soft, um, you do run the risk of it just biting through itself, uh, which is counterproductive for sure. Um, <laughs> so uh, I did three twists, so I could have done three on this side, but eh, it'll, it'll look organic. <laughs> and now using the same size mandrel plier tip, which this is honestly why I prefer using my mandrel pliers for this as opposed to... Um, just my round nose pliers is because it gives me a lot more control on having very consistently sized loops and I'm going to continue the twist pattern so if this one's on top right there then I want it on bottom on this side so just grabbing it and bringing it in and then we're gonna twist there's one two three and I try to grab as centrally as possible, putting equal pressure on both of these wires to get as even of a twist as possible. Because if your twist doesn't come out nice and even, then it'll kind of look lumpy and weird, which again is perfectly fine. Well, I hear you, kitty. Um, is perfectly fine for like an organic look, but if that's not what you're going for, I think it's very useful to know how to not get that effect. <laughs> just a kitty meowing is she is she outside I think she's looking at a tree through the back bathroom or something but I'm just going to I'm not looking at a tree looking at a bird in a tree okay and you could also pre-measure and see how long you need this to be because that's actually going to be our ring band and so from here I am also going to take my mandrel pliers and just start curving this down. I prefer to put the pressure on the wire as opposed to directly on the stone if I can help it. And now coming in like this, let's make this one about a size nine. And you could make, I mean, you've got all the way up to a size one on this ring mandrel. So you can have this be whatever size that you like. And so just shaping our wire around, and it looks like I need to do a few more twists. So I'm just going to grab both the wires and twist a couple more times. You can always add more twists, but if you start trying to take twists off, uh, your wire gets a little lumpy and weird. <laughs> so, which is why I... Um, <clears throat> yeah, that should work. Which is why I measure and then add a little bit more and then measure and then add a little bit more. And so from here, 
I'm going to snip, giving myself about four, maybe five millimeters of wire. Right there. And right there. And again, you could give yourself a little bit longer and determine for yourself uh, how you want this to be. But I'm going to make like a little half, like a little shepherd hook. Of, of a loop like if I continued it around it would be a complete loop but I just want a little hook right now because we're going to take that as close to the tip of the wire and as close to the tip of the pliers as I can and then I want to scrunch them so that they're side by side like they're friends there we go because now we're going to take this and we're just going to hook it through boop, that little loop that we had made right at the very beginning and now from here we can just smush the heck out of it <laughs> and that's going to close that loop, ideally. Oh, I could have done with making the one on this side a little bit longer. Just so that it held a little bit more securely. But it looks like it's going to be holding on just fine. So whenever you're working on yours, you might want to be a little bit more generous with yourself than what I was. But we can just get our pliers in there and kind of gently because you could scratch up your wire at this point which is fine we're learning it's okay also you can see I'm squishing the heck out of it that's also okay we're gonna straighten it out here in a sec so you may not get it perfect or just how you envisioned on the first one or the second one or the fifth one but that's okay it's this is you know the learning process it's okay to not be amazing at something the very first time and also Cut yourself a break. You're probably way more amazing than you think you are right now. So <laughs> I, I find, uh, not just with myself, but in a lot of our artists and buddies, um, artists are really hard on themselves just innately. So just let it be what it is and enjoy the process. So that actually ended up bringing us to about a size, like maybe a nine and a half, closer to a size 10 if we pushed it. Um, but that's okay because we can always fine tune it on the next one. You, you saw this used very little wire. If you were to do this out of like a gold filled or a silver wire, I would test it out in copper first just to really, really get the hang of it. And then you can just snip it off of the stone and, and try again. But there we have, oh, I like this much better. I was afraid that that would be like pokey in your finger. Nope, no poking. And we also, have the option of on this piece I hammered it on the steel block before bending the wires around on this one I'm going to test out with hammering it on the ring mandrel so here I have this is an aluminum mandrel I also have a stainless steel mandrel that I use for whenever I'm doing like torch work and stuff um, but you can just take it make sure your heads on tight and loud noises Now this is going to size your ring up. So you can see that sized our ring up by like almost two sizes. So um, a size, size and a half maybe, but it brought it from, I was shooting for a size nine and by the end I've ended up with an 11. Um, so that's one of the, if you hammer it before, you put it on your ring mandrel, you're going to get a little bit more of an accurate sizing, but this is also something that whenever, um, you know, we're in the booth and we want to be able to kind of maybe size something up a little bit for somebody, we can do that. Now this design in particular isn't overly adjustable, but it's also um, just a business model idea uh, <laughs> is you could have a couple of example rings in your booth and then you could also have your spools of wire in your stones on hand and you could let people know that if they are looking for something in particular you can do custom wraps for folks that takes a lot of like I'm not able to do that if it's just me running the booth but if I have my partner Randy there with me and I'm able to trust him to like manage the sales and everything, I can sit down and be doing custom wraps for people. And I always very much prefer to be able to, um, instead of using up my time and materials to make jewelry that I hope 
suits somebody's taste. I could instead be like, okay, I've got this stone and I've got these different colors of wire and let the client pick their stone, their wire, and their ring size and then make it custom for them. And that way I'm not having to tie up so many, you know, uh, resources and time investment in prepping inventory to hopefully have sold. So it, it's a balance. And um, if you're somebody who does this, uh, and you're, you're looking to sell your artwork or you're looking to make this your full-time job or even just like a side hustle, you'll find what works best for you as you do this. It's just, I think it's a really great idea to explore every viable option uh, that you have accessible to you so that you can figure out what works. But that is how to make a little wire wrapped ring using our groovy cabs. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us during this video. I do hope it was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments or ideas, please leave them down below. Uh, we are going to be doing a whole series of, um, this is kind of like the next level of what we're doing. And we're going to be doing even more intricate pieces after that um, using our groovy cabs. I cannot wait to make one in like this style, but with like a dragon eye that we've painted. I'm going to be experimenting with grooving uh clear cabs and then painting oh it's gonna be i'm so excited <laughs> so uh be sure to sign up for our newsletter on our website backtruthcreations.com if you would like to get notifications sent directly to you whenever we have new tutorials or when we're live streaming or when we do shop updates or different things like that currently we do a new shop update every monday and we also do a shop update tour where we kind of show you video of what we have in stock that week and we also do a giveaway of our craft along kits during our monday shop update tours as well which if you enjoy our free content our free tutorials and stuff and would like to support the creation of more of them please consider joining us over on our craft along club we have uh digital levels of uh membership where um you can get access to our exclusive saturday streams but we also have membership levels where we send out monthly kits of wire and cabochons and different things um that way you can kind of be crafting right alongside us. So uh, yeah, thank you guys again so much for just everything that you do. And we will see you all next time. So until then, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>